Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the benefits and the merciful. Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected brothers and sisters. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Hello and welcome to the 17th episode of the Treaties of Rights series with me, your host, Ali Jassim. Today we will discuss the right of the one who treats you kindly. Regarding this, Imam Sajjad Zain and Abidin, peace and blessings be upon him, has said, and the right of him who treats you kindly is that you should thank him and acknowledge his kindness and spread the good word around him and sincerely pray for him between you and God, the praised one. Then if you do that, you have thanked him both in private and in public. Then if you are able to practically recompense him, do recompense him. Otherwise, you should be determined to do so later. Thanking others for their good towards us is not just an Islamic viewpoint, but a universal one. It is inherent in man to wish to recompense those who treat him kindly. If some people do not act this way, it is because of the wicked traits they have acquired, which block this mode of natural behavior in them. Those who have received proper education and have attained Islamic characteristics strengthen this inner tendency to compensate for the good deeds done for them and always wait for a chance to practically reward those who have somehow done them a favor. The great religion of Islam even encourages us to act kindly even towards those who have wronged us. Nor can goodness and evil be equal. Repel evil with what is better. Then will he between whom and thee was hatred become as it were thy friend and intimate. The Holy Quran chapter 41 verse 34. It is natural that we should do good in response to those who do some good to us. In this verse we read that we should treat those who do us some evil with kindness. This will have a great effect and it will attract them to us. One example of portraying one's kindness is through greeting. Greeting each other in any form is the most basic way of expressing kindness to each other. However, we can also find in the traditions that practical forms of expressing kindness are also a part of the concept of greeting. In Ali ibn Ibrahim's commentary, we read the following tradition, quoted on the authority of Imam al-Baqir and Imam al-Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon them both. What is meant by a greeting is verbal expression of greetings and any other practical forms of expressing kindness. In another tradition in Manaqib, we read, a slave maid brought a flower to give to Imam al-Hasan. The Imam returned her a favor by freeing her from the bonds of slavery. When asked why, he recited the following verse. When a greeting is offered to you, meet it with a greeting still more courteous, or at least of equal courtesy. The Holy Quran and Insa chapter 4 verse 86. He then added, freeing her was a more courteous greeting. Thus, we can see that this offering of a more courteous greeting is a general decree that includes both verbal and physical forms of greeting. The idea of repaying the good with good is clearly embodied in the Holy Quran. In many of the commentaries on the Quran, the good mentioned here in this verse has been interpreted as the unity of God, his recognition and submission to God. However, these are clear instances of good. In general, it includes any good deeds or words. Imam Sadiq, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, says, there is a verse in God's book that is unrestricted. He, he was asked which verse Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, answered, It is the Almighty God's words. Is there any reward for good other than good? Chapter 55, verse 60. This holds true for believers, pagans, good doers, and evil doers. You must reward good for good. Whoever has done some good should respond with good. The proper compensation is not to respond with as much good as he did, but with more. Since if you respond equally, he is ahead of you because he initiated the good deed. In Al-Mufradat Raghib said, Doing good is loftier than doing justice, because in the case of doing justice, you give and take as much as you are supposed to. But in doing good, you always give more than you are due to give, and take less than what you deserve to get. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with many blessings. It is only fair that we repay Him. We read the following verse in the Holy Quran, Nor forget thy portion in this world, but do thou good as God has been good to thee. The Holy Quran, Al-Qasas, chapter 28, verse 77. It is generally accepted that man is always hoping to receive God's favors. He asks God for many things and expects a lot from him. Then how can he ignore other people's needs and neglect their requests? We read the following in the Holy Quran, 
Let them forgive and overlook. Do you not wish that God should forgive you? The Holy Quran, Al-Nur, chapter 24, verse 22. In other words, we can say that at times we are given great blessings, all of which we do not need. For example, He gives us our intellect with which we can run the affairs of a nation. Alternatively, He gives us so much wealth with which we can implement great social programs. All these blessings do not just belong to us. In these cases, we are God's vicegerents on earth to transfer these blessings to others. God has given us these blessings so that we may give them to others. He has planned to run the affairs of His servants through us. Time for a quick short break. Stay tuned, my dear viewers. Welcome back. Thankfulness is known as the quality of being thankful and readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. Gratitude is a trait that one develops that promotes optimism and assists in developing positive outlooks. It means that no one acknowledges what one receives, whether that may be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or others, and learning to live life as if everything were a special miracle. By doing this to an individual, gratitude not only shifts one life, by doing this to an individual, gratitude not only shifts one's life outlook, but acts as a key that opens up a door to a level of living one did not even know was possible. There have been many countless amounts of modern research that has proved that being grateful leads to happiness, resilience, it strengthens the relationships, improves the health, and reduces stress, which are all the things the Holy Quran promised 1400 years ago. In the Holy Quran it states, And remember when your Lord proclaimed, If you are grateful, I will surely increase you in favor. But if you deny, indeed my punishment is severe. The Holy Quran chapter 4 verse 7. This verse is relating to the proven fact that the more thankful an individual becomes, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless them. And the more ungrateful they become, the more not only attract negative things, but will also be punished. This is proven by modern research as it has been found out that those who are grateful and content for what they have and are low maintenance with their expectations are usually happy individuals that emit positive energy. This positive energy has been discovered to attract positive things that lead to even more happiness and reduces stress. Those, however, who are ungrateful and express their ungratefulness through their actions do not only attract more negative energy, they also have an immense impact on their surroundings. It is also seen that those who continue with their ungratefulness will eventually go through difficult situations that forces them to open their eyes to the life they were living previously and forces them to be grateful for what they had. This is exactly what the Holy Quran was pointing out in the verse that was mentioned. This relates to what is discovered by modern psychologists and philosophers today, as they label this specific concept as natural laws, which are basically laws that reveal what the Holy Quran revealed 1400 years ago. Not knowing what expressing gratitude leads to one cannot help but ask, who should I be grateful towards? The answer to that question, although may be obvious, but the true meaning is often overlooked and possibly misunderstood. One must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, but as well as anyone who does an act of goodness or favor to another individual. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his pure family, said, He who does not thank people does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most important aspect of expressing gratitude is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created who created humans in the most perfect way possible. In the Holy Quran, it mentions the perfect way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings and through the natural way life flows, gratitude should always exist for that particular reason. Now one might ask, how do I express my thankfulness towards Allah? And that is through realizing and appreciating all blessing by and within the heart to say thanks physically and to expressing 
and by expressing gratitude by doing righteous deeds. This reveals that gratitude cannot be expressed through physically by saying thank you, although that can be true at times. However, there are other important ways of expressing one's kindness. Accepting and appreciating blessings and doing righteous deeds reveals that one is content with what one has done and that the individual possesses the right amount of patience to persevere through life's trials no matter how difficult the obstacle may be, while at the same time saying thanks be to Allah. By doing this, one reveals the amount of moral courage and patience one has to the point where no matter what one goes through in terms of difficulty, they will always be thankful about what they have. When faced with difficulty, one must persevere and be thankful even for what they are going through as they should always remember and realize that there are others that are going through much worse. One of the easiest ways one can always remember to be thankful is by remembering this saying by Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein salam. After his entire family had been brutally martyred before his eyes, I thank you because you have honored us by means of prophethood, taught us the Quran, made us comprehend the religion and its commandments, granted us eyes, ears, and hearts, kept us free from the pollution of polytheism, and then enabled us to thank you for your blessings. This shows that no matter how tough an obstacle may be, one must always remember the blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed humanity with and should persevere just like the Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them did. The Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them have also taught us to be kind to those who deserve it and to those who don't. Allah's Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him his pure progeny said, treat with kindness those who are worthy of it and those who are not worthy of it. For if you treat with kindness the one who is worthy of it, then he is worthy of it. And if you treat with kindness one who is not worthy of it, then you yourself are worthy of it. At last, let us consider what Imam Sajjad means by him who treats you kindly. We read in Ibn Abbas tradition, on the resurrection day, the people who do good will enter the court. Their sins will be forgiven due to their good deeds. All their good deeds will remain on their record. Good marks are given to those people whose record shows that their good deeds are more than their bad deeds. They will thus be forgiven. They will all enter heaven. Therefore, doing good to the people will unite all in this world and the hereafter. This is the reward of one who does good. With this, we conclude this episode. Stay tuned for another episode of the Treaties of Rights series. Thank you all for watching. I'm Ali Jassim, and may Allah hasten the reappearance of the beloved Imam Mahdi. Peace and blessings be upon him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.